I'm going to try to come up with a rig for this hand, okay? And this is going to be a homemade rig that's going to combine forward and inverse kinematics in one thing. And I'm doing this just so you get an idea how that would work together. Um, the hand is not very complicated, as you can see. And if I go to my schematic, if I go to my schematic, um, it's just a bunch of objects, right? Um, I, I'm going to use forward and inverse kinematics for this. So I'm also going to do some naming stuff. Uh, using my MK, I'm going to move this down because this is going to be where everything roots off of. And I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it, um, I'll call it Palm, since that's basically what it is, although I'm going to turn off my caps lock. They are basically, each finger is just a cylinder, and then just at the tip of it, there's a sphere, right? Now, I want the fingers to bend nicely, so I'm going to use bones to move the fingers. Let me try to make one simple bone structure, uh, and I'll do it probably from this view. Um, I'm going to lose my grid. Uh, I'm under animate, envelope, set envelope. Oh, actually, that's not what I wanted. Skeleton, draw 2D chain. And I'm going to say it starts here. And I'm going to want the fingers to go, I'm going to want the fingers to go out, then down, then down. So let's go like this, then this, then this. And then I'm going to hit my right mouse key, which should break out of the operation. Good. Now let me look at a nine key here. This is the structure ah, for one, and if I middle mouse click this, ah, no, I didn't want to do that. Uh, middle mouse click it and hold down my M key, I should be able to move the whole thing. Yeah. This is the structure for one, fill, for one finger, um, which I'll put actually up here. Uh, I'm going to have to start to organize things here too. Um, I'm going to, in my scene, move this. like there, and then I'm going to straighten it out uh, like this. Good. So that's going to be uh, my pointer finger. And let's figure out where my pointer finger is here, which is here. Let's move that. I'm going to hit M. And we'll put that there. And actually, let's move this again to holding my M and my middle mouse. Um, I should probably name this. I'm going to call it pointer. Okay. Good. Uh, and let's also find what's at the tip of the thing, which is, actually I can click it here and find it, that sphere. So we'll move that as well over here probably. Good. And that's going to be one finger's worth of stuff. If I select it like this, I should be able to move that be able to move that like that and move both of these over here like this. Okay, now let me do it with the other fingers. Uh, that's my pointer. This is going to be my middle. We'll give that more room to be going around and I'll name that middle. And remember, if there are questions you can ask. Ooh, I want this guy. Uh, and we'll put this over here and this is going to be a uh, ring finger. We'll put it there, and its cylinder is going to be here. And we'll name it again while we're here, ring. And pinky. Um, you guys know that thing about why they don't, why cartoon characters don't have... Um, Four fingers, right? It, it's just a nuisance, yeah. <laughs> like, and actually, you're seeing it right here. Like, it would be much easier if I was animating this because I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't have to take this pinky <laughs> and put it over here and set up this whole other thing for it. Um, likewise, with the thumb. Ooh, see, I got the wrong one there. Okay, and these must be my thumb which I should name, but I won't do that right now. 
I'll call this thumb. Um, and I'll call this guy pinky. And this should actually lay it out fairly nicely. Uh, pinky. Yeah, I like that. Okay. I'm going to save now because if I've gone this far, it's worth um, making sure I don't lose that. <laughs> File, uh, I'll do save as, and I'm going to call this um, hand one. Good. Now, I'm going to reproduce this chain. I'm going to duplicate it. D key, and I'll put one here, and I'll put one here, and I'll put one here, and I'll put one down here. Now, they're all roughly the same, which is good. I have to move them around. This is going to be that first one. I'll hold down that M key and put it over here. That's going to be the second one. I could probably name these Pinky and what have you too, but I'm not doing that right now. That's going to be this one, and this is going to be this thumb one over here. Now I'm going to position them a little bit. Uh, my thumb, for example, I know has to go this way. Um, and actually, it might live there okay. I see that it's down too far here, so I'll lift it up so it is inside my thumb, which is pretty good. Uh, this is the middle finger, which would probably be the longest one, but I'm just going to move it forward a bit. And the rest of these um, are fairly happy where they are. Uh, I have to move them up, right? I, it, that's a very good question. Um, and the answer is yes. I'm a little bit scared to. <laughs> um, I'll show you why. Um, I should be able to, if I grab an end effector, and it, it will probably be easier here. If I grab this end effector, I should have the same movement happening, which is good. Now, if I modify a bone, this is the time to do it. I shouldn't do it after I envelope. Um, I can scale a bone like that, and hopefully everything will follow suit. Hopefully. Maybe like that. Um, but it can mess up the way the dynamics are laid out. I, I could conceivably go in there and do it, or I could draw separate bones. That's another thing I could do. It should work. <laughs> and there's a couple of things I want to show you here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to now parent the bones. I'm going to parent the root of the bones to the palm. And let me show you what I mean. Let me hit a um, nine key here. I have all this stuff laid out here now, right? I haven't enveloped anything, remember. Let me select all of my roots. Root, 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 and root. And I'm now going to parent. And it's going to go to middle mouse, the palm. And I'm going to right mouse click it. Now I'm going to envelope. I'm going to take this thing here, and I'm going to envelope it, set envelope, yes, um, to probably just these four bones here, and right mouse click it. Good. And let me do that with the other ones too. Uh, let me take this pointer finger here, and let me envelope, envelope, set envelope, yes. Um, we want to select that and right mouse. Good. You'll see that those are staying local, which is good. We'll take the middle finger. We will envelope. Set envelope. Yes. Right mouse. Uh, ring. Envelope. Set envelope. Yes right mouse. You'll notice I'm not including the effectors, though they're probably involved either way, but um, I'm going to do something else with the effectors in the end. Uh, let's take that pinky envelope, set envelope, yes. Okay, now because of the way I did this, if I select the palm, it's going to move all of the um, bones, and the bones are going to move F. All of the fingers. See that? They're what? That's right. 
The fingertips, I don't want to distort. The fingertips, I want to be solid, like they're metal. So what I'm going to do with the fingertips, I'm going to parent them to the end effector. Because I have a null point near each of them. So if I take, and let's hit an 8 key. That, no, let's hit a 9 key. If I go in here a little bit, deselect, and I have this sphere here, I want to parent this to this. This parent middle mouse like that. And let me try it with the other ones too. Um, this parent middle mouse, this parent middle mouse, um, right mouse out of there, uh, this one parent middle mouse, and finally that pinky. This one parent it and middle mouse it. Now, if this worked, I hope it did. If I select my end effector like this on the pinky, and we'll go to a full screen here, um, the whole finger and the tip should move without the end tip distorting. See that? Um, and if I pick the hand, the whole hand should move. So that now let's say I wanted to do something like this and then let's say it starts waving like that and then rolls up and points as an example. Um, I can now do this with this whole rig and a combination of forward and inverse kinematics. But this is basically, when they talk about rigging, this is what a rig is. A rig is a combination of forward kinematics, inverse kinematics, enveloping, and a bunch of other stuff. And what we will look at next week are the more advanced rigs they give us, those ones for the characters and what have you, which you can play with now. But this is not a bad way to get an idea how a rig would work. And oftentimes, you might have a scene that's simple enough for this to be all you want it to do. Um, just for kicks, let's see if we can animate it um, to some degree. I'm going to select here, and I'm first going to do the movements of the hand. Um, so I'll give myself more frames. I'll go to like. 500 or so, and I'm going to rotate it at first. Um, let's say we start it where it is, and we'll say by about a second, the hand rotates up like that. Um, yeah, which is fine. And let me key that to make sure that's happening. Okay, and now we will wave it uh, with translations. Um, I'll go back to the beginning here. And I'm going to key its translation starting there. And then by the time it gets here, I'm going to key it again. And then I'll key it going back and forth a bit. We'll start there. Let me see what that's doing right now. The hand comes up. It moves that way. We'll have it move up to here. We'll have it move over to here, let's say. And let me see what that looks like. Good. And actually, I might have it rotate a bit while it does that. So go back to my rotations. Maybe about here. Rotations. Um, I'm going to key right here. And then I'll slide forward. So if I was going like that, I would probably be here. Key it. And it jumps a little bit there, but I'll worry about that later. By the time it gets here, I would have it go over to there. And I'll have it go back to the middle. Uh, we will have it go like this. And I will also do a translation back to about here. Um, and now let's actually have the hand bend over and point. Uh, I'll do the rotations of the hand first. We should probably make it go back to some default position, by the way. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. There, we'll have it, by the time it gets here, it will rotate back to there. Good. By the time it gets here, it will rotate back to here. And let's check it out from this perspective here. Okay, good. And now we're going to start keyframing those end effectors primarily.
uh, I'm going to hit my 9 key, and I'm going to grab my thumb's end effector, which is buried in here somewhere, effector 4. Uh, I'm going to key just the translations on that. Um, we can start and give it a key to start. It's not going to matter. That's going to lock it in place till it gets to back and forth there. To there, I'm going to key it again. And then in this view, as it rolls over, I'm going to have it go underneath. So by the time it gets here, we want that thumb underneath there. And let me see if that's right from this perspective. Uh, let's lose that grid. I think I need to be a little bit more forward this way, I think. And maybe a little bit back, maybe a little bit back that way. And let me key that. So now the thumb is doing that. Good. Now let's grab these three fingers, because I'll have these three fingers roll at once. Um, I'm going to go back to my schematic, which is floating down here. I'm going to grab the end of fingers on everything but the pointer. One, two, three. And I'm going to go to the beginning of my scene. I'm going to key them. I'm going to go forward to about here and key all three of those again. And then by the time it folds down, I will have them, and hopefully they move nicely, like that. Let's key that. Now, if that all worked, we'll have it pointing at us so that, yeah, so that the animation we're looking at would be like this. And if we hit play on it, we should see. Why did I lose my play? Well, here's my play. I have to fix that pop there, but I'll work on that later. So it's waving, it comes in, it folds, and points at someone. Okay? Now, obviously, keyframing is never my specialty. I, I did a lot of it, but some of it, I should say. Um, but I could fine tune this to do what I wanted to do. And for a scene, this is just what I would need for a rig. Remember, any movie or TV show I'm working on, or even a video game, it's going to have a scene of about five seconds, 10 seconds, something like that. So they will make a rig just for that scene. So that if I have just a hand that has to move around, I'll have a very detailed rig. And then if I was in a wider shot where I didn't need that, I wouldn't have near as much, near as much stuff going on in that hand. OK? So any thoughts on that? Very good question. I would, I would have to do a combination of forward kinematics. And what I would do is I would probably move the object first. And then I would take the hand and I would, I would animate the end effectors touching where it was so that it looked like it was picking it up. <laughs> do you get the idea? Yeah, but like that's how I would do that, most likely, because it would be a lot easier than actually moving the hand and trying to get the object in there. But you can try it either way. But when they mean forward kinematics, they generally mean you start, and it's kind of a weird concept, from the back of the animation, and you move forward as compared to what we do, which is we start at the front of whatever we're getting and kind of move backwards to it. Um, there should be a video up about this. Uh, actually, let me pause it now. <laughs>